Texas Rangers represent the legendary symbol of the American Old West, embodying both the individualism and uncompromising violence of that era. In a lawless frontier, Rangers have a fearsome reputation as guardians of order amid chaos. In this video, we dive into the bloody history of the Texas Rangers, uncovering their origins, legendary feats, and the controversies surrounding their operations. From confronting notorious outlaws and Native American tribes to their role in di border disputes, the Texas Rangers have left an indelible mark on the annals of the Old West. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos. Texas Rangers, founded in 1823, is the second oldest state law enforcement agency in the United States. Just two years after the white settlement of Texas, Rangers began operations. After Mexico's War of Independence, a wave of about 600 to 700 families immigrated to Texas, an area lacking a regular army to protect its new inhabitants. Stephen F. Austin, known as the father of Texas, recruited 10 men as rangers to protect settlers from both Indian attacks and criminal elements. However, it was not until October 17, 1835 that Texas officially formed the force that would later become known as the Texas Rangers. On November 24, 1835, Robert McAlpin Williamson was appointed the first major ranger. With the addition of 56 men in three companies, the Texas Rangers grew rapidly, expanding their numbers to more than 300 men by 1837. Although their numbers grew, the Rangers' impact was still limited in its early years. During Texas's struggle for independence from Mexico, Rangers took on a variety of roles, including acting as a scout and messenger. In addition, they were assigned important tasks, such as recovering livestock, protecting refugees, and sabotaging Mexican supplies and equipment. The administration of President Sam Houston showed little regard for Rangers' responsibilities in Texas. However, when Mary Beau B. Lamar assumed the presidency in 1838, he rejected Houston's border policies of friendship with the Indians and engaged the Rangers in their war against the tribes. Commissioned by the Texas Congress, Lamar recruited eight companies of mounted volunteers and maintained a 56-member ranger company. Within a month, he had supplied to five similar companies in Central and South Texas. Over the next three years, the rangers engaged in warfare against native tribes, winning a number of notable encounters, including the war at the Council House in San Antonio and the raid on Linville and the Battle of Plum Creek. By the end of Lamar's tenure, the power of the most powerful Indian tribes had been greatly diminished by the Texans. When Sam Houston was re-elected president in December 1841, he recognized the effectiveness of the Texas Rangers. Seizing the opportunity, he enacted a law on January 29, 1842, officially authorizing a company to act as the Rangers. Thus, Captain John Coffee Jack Hayes assumed command leading a squad of 150 rangers responsible for defending the southern and western Texas borders. Houston's wise decision played a key role in repelling the Mexican invasions of 1842 and securing the white settlers from Indian attacks for three years later. Under Hayes' leadership, recruitment standards were raised, rigorous training programs were implemented, and a special corps was formed. From this group came several famous ranger captains, including W.A.A. Bigfoot Wallace, Henry McCulloch, Samuel H. Walker, and Robert Addison Gillespie. In 1846, Texas officially became part of the United States, with the beginning of the Mexican-American War as the United States sought to establish the Rio Grande as its boundary. During this two-year period, the Texas Rangers were called upon to support the United States Army, rapidly gaining a reputation as a particularly effective fighting force. Fully armed, the Rangers were said to be so formidable against Mexican guerrillas that they were quickly nicknamed the Texas Devils. After the end of the Mexican-American War on February 2, 1848, 
the United States assumed responsibility for defending the Texas border. Rangers were largely disbanded, leading to a decline in their operations. It was not until nearly a decade later in the spring of 1858 that they were again active to tackle a group of Comanche Indians north of the Red River. After Texas seceded from the United States during the Civil War in 1861, which led to the founding of an organization called Terry's Texas Rangers in Houston, led by Colonel Benjamin Franklin Terry, many former Rangers enlisted under his command. In 1877, the Texas Rangers embarked on a pursuit of notorious criminal John Wesley Hardin. Hardin, who killed Deputy Sheriff Charles Webb in Brown County in 1874, fled the state to evade relentless pursuit. A Texas Ranger named John Barclay Armstrong, better known as McNelly's Bulldog, was ordered to pursue Hardin across state boundaries. Finally, a confrontation ensues when Hardin is arrested on a train in Pensacola, Florida. During the fierce gunfight, Hardin was knocked unconscious, one of his gang members was killed, and the rest were arrested on July 23, 1877. In the spring of 1878, Sam Bass and his gang held up two stagecoaches and four trains within 25 miles of Dallas. The group quickly became the subject of pursuit across North Texas, by a special company of Texas Rangers led by Captain Junius Peak. Bass skillfully evaded his pursuers until one of his teammates, Jim Murphy, became an informant. When the Bass gang ventured south with the intention of robbing a small bank in Round Rock, Murphy wrote a letter to Major John B. Jones, the commander of the Texas Rangers Border Patrol Battalion. At Round Rock, Texas, where Jones set up an ambush, a fierce clash broke out between the gang and the Rangers on July 19, 1878. In the midst of the chaos, Bass's assistant, Seaborn Barnes, was killed. Despite his injuries, Bass managed to mount his horse and retreat. The next morning, Bass was found laying helpless in a pasture north of town by the authorities and was later taken back to Round Rock, where he died of his injuries the next day. In the years that followed, the Frontier Battalion enjoyed considerable success, arresting more than 3,000 outlaws from Texas. By 1882, however, the concept of a separate border began to fade. Over the next three decades, the Texas Rangers suffered a decline in influence and reputation. However, they occasionally intervened in incidents involving cattle theft, battling Mexican and Indian looters along the Rio Grande, and sometimes defending blacks against white mobs. During this time, critics voiced calls for the Texas Rangers to be reduced or completely disbanded. Thus, in 1901, the Border Guard Battalion was abolished, and the Rangers force was restructured into four law enforcement companies of 20 men each. During the early stages of World War I in 1914, the Texas Rangers faced the daunting task of identifying and apprehending many spies, agitators, saboteurs, and conspirators. The raid by Pancho Villa in Columbus, New Mexico in 1916 further strained the already acrimonious relationship between the United States and Mexico. Thus, under the leadership of Governor of Texas appointing the regular Rangers and hundreds of special Rangers, approximately 5,000 Hispanics were tragically killed between 1914 and 1919. These actions quickly became a source of notoriety and disgrace, losing the public's trust. In January 1919, the Texas overhauled the force but not before some sordid stories of ranger brutality emerged. Four companies of ranger recruits were reduced from 20 to 15 each. The legislature also introduced higher wages to attract qualified individuals and established citizen complaint procedures. With the introduction of Prohibition in 1920, the ranger's primary mission shifted to patrolling the Rio Grande to combat alcohol and livestock smuggling. During the Great Depression, the Rangers' force was reduced to just 45 individuals. Under these circumstances, Rangers openly supported Governor Ross Sterling in the Democratic primary, opposing Miriam A. Ma Ferguson 
in the fall of 1932. Thus, when Ferguson took office in January 1933, she fired every ranger for their partisanship, began cutting pay and further reducing the budget allotted to the force, eventually reducing their number to 32. Without rangers' protection, Texas quickly turned into a haven for notorious outlaws like Raymond Hamilton, George Machine Gun Kelly, Clyde Barrow, and Bonnie Parker. In 1934, Frank A. Hamer, a seasoned ranger who resigned amid Ferguson cuts, was asked by the head of Texas prison system to use his skills to track down Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow. After spying on the Barrow gang across nine states, Frank Hamer received intelligence from law enforcement in Louisiana that said Bonnie and Clyde had visited Beanville Parish on May 21, 1934. Furthermore, it was discovered that Clyde had arranged a rendezvous with gang member Henry Methvin. Unbeknownst to Bonnie and Clyde, Methvin, in cooperation with law enforcement, assisted in setting up an ambush along the route to the rendezvous point. A team led by former Texas Rangers Hamer and Manny Galt, along with two Louisiana officers and two other Texans, waited patiently on Highway 154 between Gibsland and Sales. Despite staying up all night and all day, Bonnie and Clyde still didn't show up. However, at about 9.10 a.m. on May 23, 1934, just as the team was beginning to lose hope, they suddenly heard Clyde's stolen Ford V8 approaching. When Clyde stopped to chat with Harry Methvin's father, who strategically positioned his truck there that morning to divert Clyde's attention and lead him closer to the team. At the opportune moment, the lawmen opened fire, killing Bonnie and Clyde while firing about 130 rounds in total. In 1935, James Allred took over as governor of Texas, campaigning on the promise of increased law enforcement. In response, the legislature quickly established the Texas Department of Public Safety, which included the merger of the Texas Rangers on August 10, 1935. This new division also includes the Highway Patrol, along with the Crime Science Lab and Detection Center known as the Headquarters Division. Over the years, the Texas Rangers have investigated a variety of crimes, from murder to political corruption. They played an important role in maintaining peace during riots, protecting the governor of Texas, and apprehending fugitives. Currently, nearly 200 highly trained and skilled individuals are stationed across the state, making the Texas Rangers one of the most effective investigative law enforcement agencies in the world. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.